You are now listening to the Going North Podcast, where you'll receive tips and techniques to advance yourself. I'm your host, Dom Brightman, and every week we're going to be hearing from an author who's going to share their expertise to help you charge forward in life. On a quick side note, be sure to check out Going North, the book. It's available in ebook, audio, as well as paperback form for those who love to read a traditional book. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North Podcast, we have, wait for it, wait for it, you guessed it, another author, yeah! That's probably a surprise at this point. No, but seriously though, we have one heck of a guest right here. He is a Baltimore citizen right here in the top 300 right here. This guy right here, he holds a bachelor's degree from the University of Baltimore and he's very, very active in his community serving on the board of directors for a local nonprofit aimed at serving inner city underprivileged youth. And he is very dedicated and he has an insane work ethic because his life motto is serve to be a blessing to others. And this guy right here has been a blessing to many others with his business as well, helping folks to get all the legal stuff straightened out, as well as many other things. And you guys are probably wondering, who am I talking about? I'm talking about the one, the only, Reginald Gatt. How are you today, sir? No, I'm wonderful, man. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, sir. Pleasure to have you, sir. So I just gave a short little intro into the wonderful world of Mr. R.G. himself. Mind filling in the cavities where I may have missed some fillings. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, that's that's me in a nutshell. Reginald Gant, Baltimore native, born and raised. If I wanted anybody to know anything about me, first and foremost, I, I want them to know that I'm a child of God, right? So my faith is very important to me. I'm a family man. My wife and I are coming up on three years of marriage. We have a beautiful blended family, three children, a teenage daughter who's graduating high school this year mm-hmm. on her way to college. We have a first grader, and the boss of the house has just turned two, so we're all over the place. Community servant man, servant leader, ministry leader, business leader, author, speaker. I'm really just out to be everything that God told me that I can be, you know, so. That's who I am in a nutshell. Amen to that. Amen to that. Indeed, that's what I'm talking about, man. A lot of folks are kind of finding it more hard to believe in God than ever, man, especially with all the nonsense going out here. And it's great that we still have folks that have their faith in the right place, which is awesome. Absolutely. And also, like the fact you said, the boss of the house just turned to that. Is... <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's so interesting, man. I mean, I literally, he wasn't putting in 40, 50, 60 hours a week, but the two-year-old calls the shot, man. It's fun times around here in my house. That's all I can say, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of brought me one of my other buddies I had a conversation with her the other day. She was like, yeah, modern day slavery with the kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 straight up, man. <laughs> I mean, I pay the mortgage, man, but I, I don't call the shots. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you think the nine to five is slavery? Wait till you become a parent. <laughs> But you know what? At the end of the day, man, we wouldn't trade it in for anything. You know what I mean? That's true indeed, because, I mean, without offspring, I mean, who's going to carry this torch when we're done? (laughs) Absolutely. Well, with being a ministry leader and a business leader, getting up to where you currently are, what trials did you have to overcome? That's a great question, Dominique. So, I'm an author, two-time author, right? First book called Serve Yourself to Greatness. Second book called Serve Your Child to Greatness. Both books are books of affirmation because I totally believe in the power of speaking life. But prior to me getting to that point, I'll just be quite transparent with you. Growing up in Baltimore City, I grew up on the east side, Bel Air urban area, northeast Baltimore. Childhood was a little interesting. You know, I got made fun of often. You and I, you know, we're both uh, of darker skin complexion. So back in the day, you know, dark skin kids really weren't in. So I got teased for, for being dark. I had really bad teeth, so I eventually had to get braces. So I had, I got teased for, for having braces. 
my mom didn't really dress me in, you know, the best of clothes. You know, obviously she she did the best that she could, but I didn't have the latest designer wear, the latest fashions like other kids had. So I got teased in that aspect. So I literally grew up with low self-esteem, low self-worth. So I had to fight through those challenges all the way up into adulthood. Even though I had a mom I mean, who really deeply instilled into me at a very early age, you know, affirmations. You know, she told me constantly that I was smart that I was handsome, you know, that I was funny. She constantly ingrained those things into my mind, but I didn't believe it because of my peers and what other children would say. So I struggled with low self-esteem growing up, low self-worth. I also struggled with some fatherhood issues as well. My parents divorced at an early age, so I was primarily raised by my mom in a single-parent household, but I did see my dad, you know, periodically. So I had some some issues with that growing up, you know, because I wanted more of him than what I got. And then I also became a teenage father myself at the age of 19. So I had to struggle with, now, how do I raise this child? I don't know how to raise a child. You know, I'm struggling with the the father-son relationship that I have with my own dad. So now, hey, I am 19 years old, fresh out of high school in my freshman year at Morgan State University. Now I'm a father. Now I got to kind of figure this thing out. I mean, just the low self-esteem, the feelings of failure as a dad, the feelings of failure, you know, as just a, a man in general trying to figure out what I really wanted to do with my life. But I will say this, man, God has been faithful to me. God has been great. He's placed some support in my life. He's placed men and people into my life that always saw the potential in me and that helped me to pull that out. And now that's my main goal and my main aspiration is to turn around and to do the same thing, right, to be a light to somebody else in, in their dark place in life. Now... 37 years old, you know, you and I were just joking about that before we kicked off the call. 37, man, I mean, I'm literally a grown man who knows exactly who he is. I know exactly who I am. I know exactly what God is calling me to be, and I'm walking exactly in what God is calling me to do. So now, in my eyes, I am successful. So it's my job now to transfer my energy and my belief in myself into other people so that they have that for themselves. Amen, indeed, man. That, that's really powerful there, especially the fact that just having to learn how to really be a father to your first child at the time and in your teenage years. I mean, that that's a job within itself. It goes back to the kids raising kids thing. That's amazing. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, it, it caught everybody by surprise, man. <laughs> it definitely caught me by surprise. The <laughs> very first time that I ever changed a, a pamper in life, right? I changed my daughter's pamper for the very first time in life. Uh... My mom made me feel so small because I, I put the pamper on backwards. I literally did not know the front of the pamper from the back of the pamper. And here I was, I was proud that I changed the pamper, but it was on backwards. <laughs> and that's when I realized, I was like, you know what, this is not a game. This child, like, is dependent on me forever. And, you know, life had to change. You know, I had to grow up. And for any parents out there that are listening or that will be listening in the future, We all know that our children force us to grow up quickly. You can either become responsible after you have a child or you can continue to be irresponsible. But obviously I made the right decision. I chose to be responsible. And I thank God for my daughter because I I literally believe she changed the trajectory of my life. It's true indeed to me. <laughs> Once that child comes in, you'll 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 find out how much <laughs> dedication and commitment you really have in you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, man. I have friends, I have family members. You know, they have children here, there, everywhere. They're not active, you know, and that's that's not cool, you know. But uh, yeah, a child is a blessing from God, you know. So we can't take those blessings lightly. Yeah. So my advice to you, Mr. Brightman, don't rush it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, to trust me. <laughs> trust me, don't it? <laughs> that old adage is true. I will truly tell you this. It takes an entire village to raise a child. That single parenting thing, my wife and I, we said enough is enough with that. Raising kids, from, you know, from divorced, blended households, obviously we're in that situation now. But enough is enough. Like, our children will only see us married forever. That's it, right? Right. And we're going to ingrain in them, like, you get married, you stay married, right? We we want to put it into all of this single parenthood, you know, to these blended families. Marry your wife, marry your husband, stay with that person, work it out with that person, raise your family together and not divide it. Amen, indeed, because it creates so many headaches and so many unnecessary trials and struggles, man. It, the single parenthood thing is like, you, 
it's just you trying to earn as much money as you can to take care of both you and the child or possibly children <laughs> among the other things too on top of that what else you got for me i know you i know you loaded up with some great questions i know you because you're a thinker true indeed very true indeed so with all of this, notice that you mentioned earlier about how you're giving back to people, and you also dropped some great advice earlier on not only making sure you end the blended family thing, but also what advice would you give to someone who is looking to one day become that motivational speaker, to one day write that book? What advice would you give to them? Man, I would tell them to just do it, honestly. Make like Nike. So this is the thing, right? God speaks to us all. And sometimes we hear him, sometimes we choose to ignore him. So for that person that's out there that's considering to be that motivational speaker, my advice is to 100% go all in at it. I had a conversation yesterday. I was fortunate enough to attend an event at the University of Baltimore, my great alma mater. A young guy, you know, we had a sidebar conversation, a really great conversation until he told me he graduated from City. That was his only downfall because I went to the, I went to the, to the greatest high school in Baltimore known to man. And, and we know that is Baltimore Polytechnic Institute. So that was his only flaw, right? But he told me that he wanted to be a motivational speaker, and I began to ask him a series of questions as to why. And he told me that, you know, he just feels called to use his voice to speak to other young black men. And I said, what's holding you up? He was like, I don't really know what's holding me up. And I said, just do it. Put yourself in situations where you can speak to people. Surround yourself with people that are possibly doing it. I asked him, did he know anybody? He was like, no. I was like, that's what? Now you do. I just happen to be a motivational speaker myself. I can pull you into my network. I was like, there's so many schools out here, so many after-school programs, so many incarcerated programs, right? So many college campuses, whatever, middle schools. It does not matter, right? You have to be intentional about what you want. And once you really decide that that's really what you want to do, there's really nothing stopping you besides your own fear. So for that person that's desiring to be a motivational speaker or author or whatever it is, right, just do it. Just get it done, right? Sit down, think about it. I like to tell people, dream, plan, do. If you've dreamt about it, right, that's great. That's that's number one. Now you plan it. How can you go about doing it? And maybe you need help with planning. Bounce that off with some people that you trust in your circle. Do some research. Google, you can find everything on Google these days. And then once you've dreamed it, once you've planned it, there's only one thing left to do. Get it done. And it doesn't necessarily always have to be for free. A lot of things that we do, you know, we don't always have to get monetary gain from, but God will bless you in other ways. If you feel called to use your voice, use your voice. Find as many people to talk to as possible using your voice if that's what you want to do. And I guarantee you, your faithfulness, it will be rewarded sooner or later. Like, that's just how it works. And I'm sure that you can agree with me because you're also an author and speaker yourself. Yeah, I, I agree with you fully indeed. I remember it was, I think it was a few months ago last year, September, as a book fair. Did a book swap with an author, and I get a call in January for her asking me to speak to a group of her children for Martin Luther King Day breakfast. So it, it's true. Yeah. I mean, and, and the funny thing was, I didn't make any money at that book event, <laughs> that that book festival, because I went on a Friday too. So it's like, it's like yeah, you, <laughs> on, on the day of, you might be be a little disappointed or like hey whatever it's free may have lost some money uh -huh. but you're gonna get it back <laughs> you get it back man you get it back and i'll tell you man that's exactly how i've been blessed lately so you know i mean i've really been pushing the being a speaker more in 2018 a lot of people my backdrop is hr so a lot of people know me and around town my wife and i we have our own hr company up I used to be known as the resume guy, right? I'm trying to get away from being known as just the resume guy because I serve in so many different other capacities. But um, in 2018, I really ramped up my efforts to be known as an author and speaker. So I connected with a guy. We did some community work for free, right? He serves in the city youth out there in Glen Burnie. I didn't even know Glen Burnie had ghettos, man. I had no clue. I know, he right? says, I mean, when I say, man, like, like Glen Burnie looked like Cherry Hill. Straight up. So he's in like he's in like the Cherry Hill neighborhood of Glen Burnie and he asked me to come out there, talk to his guys, purchase a couple of my books so that he can give them away for free. So he blessed me in that way. So that was the first time that him and I got a chance to meet face to face and then after that event we just stayed in touch. We follow each other on social media. Then he introduced me to his pastor. His pastor was like, Hey, you know, Reg, you know, I've been hearing great things about you. 
having a Black History Month program at my church, want to bring you in as one of our speakers on that day. I mean, that was just, what, February? It just passed, right? I mean, another sold-out book is there. I'm, I can't even tell you how many books I bought. They all sold out. And, I mean, just because I met this one guy, we did some community work free of charge, not looking, just looking to serve. That led to something, which led to something, which led to his pastor saying, hey, you do great work, let me bring you in. Sold out of all my books. Walked out, you know, financially blessed. Obviously, we tithed and still had a bunch of money left over. Like, that's just how it works. But imagine if I didn't step out there, where would I be? <laughs> people are blessed. You know what I mean? People are waiting on our gifts, right? It's selfish of us not to really use them. Man, I agree with that, man. People are waiting for our gifts, man. That 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 is so true indeed, man. That Heck, that even kind of speaks to one of the past podcast guests in his book, Power of the Seed. It's where you just plant a seed, and then someone comes by and waters that seed, and then it blossoms out into an opportunity that you never see coming in a good way. Mm. I totally agree, 100%. Yes, good stuff today. So speaking of books, what book is really, well, actually, what, I know you read a lot too, so what book, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, top three books in addition to the Bible that really have inspired you to take action? Okay, top three, huh? Yes, sir. You say in addition to the Bible? Yes, sir. Okay, because uh, obviously, you know, you know, that's the premise. So that's first and foremost. So Bible aside, number one, I went in the devil by Napoleon Hill. Totally changed my life. Totally changed my life. I went in the devil by Napoleon Hill. I would say number two is I read a book recently by Lisa Nichols. Not sure. You, you probably follow her. You follow Lisa Nichols? Yeah, I follow her, and I still need to, I think I know which book you're about to name, too. I haven't read that Abundance one yet. Young. Yep, yep, that, that's yeah. the one. That's yep. the one. Yep, it's called Abundance Now, man. When I say that, because I like to read a highlight. I think I ran through about five or six highlights in that book. I oh, lied to you not, Dominique. Oh, wow. Like, <laughs> how good that book was. Yeah, but I'll witness that. Well, I would say Lisa Nichols, Abundance Now. And um, what do you think about John Maxwell? I mean, he's the leadership guru. And he's really helped me train my mind and develop myself at as to being a leader, you know, because sometimes we don't like to look at ourselves as leaders, but in actuality we are. If we're using our voice as speakers, if we're using our voice as authors, then we're leading somebody in a certain direction to do a certain thing. Like, we're not just out here willy-nilly talking for nothing, right? We're leading them to a desired end. So um, anything John Maxwell, John C. Maxwell, and I had the privilege of seeing him live and hearing him live in Columbus, Ohio last year, my wife and I, just a, just a, a great guy. But, yeah, I Wouldn't the Devil probably is the number one book that I say outside of the Bible that changed the way that I look at life in general. I've read that book several times. I still find new things in it. Yeah, that that book indeed, I think it was about a year or so ago I first picked up that book. It, it kept died. I kept seeing it on the shelf while I was at work, and one day I picked it up, and then <laughs> I got into it. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so I mean, because if you look at it, I mean, that book was written so long ago. I mean, we're talking about, like, the 1900s, 1920s, so somewhere around then, maybe even prior to that. The stuff that he wrote, which is over 100 years ago, still pertains to today. Like, how how forward-thinking, you know, how powerful and forward-thinking that something that was written possibly 100 years ago is still relevant today. Like, that's a legacy right there. That's what I'm desiring to do. I'm desiring to, when, when God closes my eyes for the last time, I want people to be talking about, Something that I did a hundred years from now. Amen. <laughs> yeah, so those are the What are your top three books, man? Because that's a great question. Top three books? Oh man, that that's a loaded question. Let's see here. John, you the list of John Max. I'm a John Maxwell nut, so. <laughs> and, okay. But out of all of his books, though, I have to say my favorite from him is the Twenty One. In the uh, speedable, uh, no, not the laws, the mm-hmm. the guide that came with it, the the green and gold book, not the red and gold one. The, oh, okay. Yeah, the, the indispensable cause of a leader. It's the shorter version. It's like pocket size, a hundred sixty pages. Okay. Yeah, that book really changed a lot for me. It, a, a lot of the activities I did in there especially with the reflection activities and asking the closest ones to you to rate your top, top five things, like the top five things that, that they really like you for and some of the things that 
you may be weak weekend. And one of my friends actually pointed out to me that I have a lot of <laughs> antisocial tendencies. And I was like, oh, shoot. Wow, for real. <laughs> so, so yeah, if I got to work on that and join Toastmasters after reading that one, as well as some other things. Mm-hmm. After that, let's see. Let's go with, let's go with As a Man Think of. As a Man Think of. Oh. <laughs> my favorite quote of all time yep, yep. Sure. <laughs> as a man think of so is he right <laughs> Absolutely. yeah that book right there that's it's it's pocket size 60 pages you'll you'll get it done in one sitting but you'll have to go back to it time and time yep. again multiple times hmm, that's awesome yeah personal development is everything so actually i'll just jump in and piggyback man and add that to uh to that question that you asked me earlier, to that person that's desiring to be a motivational speaker, right? You have to develop yourself personally, right? You have to you have to develop yourself into the person that you want to become. It just doesn't happen overnight. Like, it's a process. So I'll, I'll definitely piggyback. And besides dream, plan, do, personally develop yourself along the way, right? Leaders are readers. So, you know, you can't be out here, you know, wanting to make change, then you come home and you plop down in front of the TV for eight hours, right? No. You <laughs> develop yourself. Amen. <laughs> I don't even know what it's like to watch TV, Dominique. We don't, we don't watch TV in our household. The kids do. My wife and I, we don't. Man, you're too busy for TV, man. I'm not surprised. I agree, I agree with you. <laughs> busy, man. We're out of time, man. Every now and again, we might pull something, something up on uh, on Netflix or, you know, my wife subscribes to the OWN. So we, we might binge watch some reality stuff maybe on the weekend well, if we can get rid of the kids for a little while. But Monday through Friday, bro, we got time. Not us. We're trying to be great. <laughs> yeah, man. You don't get great by watching other people on TV, man. <laughs> no, man. They, they live in their dreams, man. I'm, I'm trying to get to where they at. Yeah, so we got to put our hands down and work. Yeah. That's some good questions you have. Oh, thank you, thank you. So if you were 25 in 2018 with all of your knowledge, what advice would you give to yourself? If I was 25 years old right now, I would tell myself to deliberately choose to be great. Every day that we wake up, this is how I view life. First of all, every day that we wake up and we open our eyes, that's a present, right? That's a gift from God. Every day we have choices. You know, we can choose whether we're going to bathe or not, whether we're going to brush our teeth or not. We choose what we eat. We choose what we wear. We choose which way we drive to work. You know, we choose, choose, choose all day long. And when we don't make choices, guess what? Choices are being made for us. Because when we refuse to think, that means that someone or something else is thinking on our behalf and we we give up that right to think. So my 25-year-old self right now, I would say to deliberately choose to be great every single day that you wake up. Personally, develop yourself every day. I'm talking about 10, 20, 30 pages of a good book or, or audio every day. I would tell my 25-year-old self, follow your heart. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to encourage my daughter to do right now. You know, obviously, she's at a pivotal point in your high school. She's kind of, you know, I, and I get it because I was 17, 18, what I wanted to do with my life, and then I became a young dad right afterwards. So I'm trying to get her to understand that you you have to follow your heart. It's not about what I want you to do with your life or your mom or your grandparents or anybody. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? Follow whatever that is, and then we'll support you. Then I would just say, you know, first and foremost, above all of those things, allow God to be center. There have been times in my life, in my in my younger life, uh, you know, basically, definitely when I was uh, 19, 20, 21-ish, when I thought that I knew everything. So I kind of took God out of the equation. I got in the driver's seat. And obviously, when you take the main driver out and you insert yourself, you get into accident. I've had a series of accidents, quote-unquote, over my life. When I realize, you know what, I need to put the main driver back into the driver's seat. Because that way now I know I'm going to reach my final destination safely and the way that I'm supposed to. So I would say keep God first and foremost all the time, not just sometimes. When life is good, keep him there. When life is not so good, definitely keep him there and everything in between. That's basically some of the things that I would say if I was 25 again. Oh, to be 25 again, the good days. Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> My bones crack when I'm gonna wake up, Dominique. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm not even 40 yet. <laughs> Why am I back cracking at 37? <laughs> All the way you're moving, right? <laughs> well, that's a great question, though. Yeah, for anybody, not just 25, 15, 25, 100. Follow your heart. Yeah, man, because a lot of, because now in this, this day and age, there's so much shit you can do. Heck, even one lady I spoke to, she actually documented her whole senior year of college on Instagram and blogged about it. And she turned it into wow. a book called Enrolling in Confidence. So it, you, you can do anything these days. So it, it's possible. Absolutely. I agree. Well, all right. For those who want to keep in contact with you and help you to one day create that moment, if not already create that moment where you'll be known 100 years plus from now, where can we get in contact with you? Man, thank you for asking. Um, so on Facebook, not hard to find. It's my name. It's Reginald Kent. Um You'll see my profile picture is actually my speaker one sheet. So the red, black, and uh, white speaker one sheet that basically describes a little bit about what I do through my organization serves. So on Facebook, it's Reginald Gant. On LinkedIn, it's also the same at Reginald Gant. On Instagram, you can find me at Reggie Serves, R-E-G-G-I-E, Serves, S-E-R-V-E-S, because I have a men's organization. It's called Serve. And uh, that website, if anybody wants to take a look at some of the things that I do, specifically pertaining to men, is www.serve, the number four, men.com. So it's serve for mencom And that's basically the whole premise of what I want to do. So I'll, I'll end it with saying this. When I say serve, it's, it's an acronym. And uh, you, you know what the acronym is because you have the book, and hopefully the book is going to be a blessing to you. Serve stands for Seek Excellence, Respect, Value Every Day. So every day that I wake up, this is what I do. I, I chase after excellence, right? Being average is not enough. Being mediocre is not enough. Good is the en enemy to great. I'm pretty sure you've heard somebody say that before. Good is the enemy to great. I don't want to just be good. I want to be excellent. So every day that I wake up, I chase after excellence. Every day that I wake up, I respect the fact that God woke me up that day. So I'm going to do everything in my power, right, to be a blessing to somebody else, to serve to add value. And that last that last one is adding value. Every day that you wake up, right, who can you add value to? Who can you bless? Sometimes it's going to be a financial blessing. Sometimes it's not going to be monetary. You know, what can you contribute to society? So every day that I wake up, I try to serve myself to greatness. So S-E-R-V-E, Seek Excellence, Respect, Value Every Day, and that book is also found on the website. Well, there you have it, folks. Seek excellence, respect, value every day. I'm talking that that is that is amazing, and that one sheet right there, the the masterpiece yeah. of living, man. That uh, one of these days, I can't wait to hear that one, man. Cause I'm like, all right, man, I got the five. Well, you, guess what? Since since you and I are Toastmasters buddies, uh, you might actually get the inside scoop that and maybe one of my uh, speeches one day. You know, we got to stop and out speeches, man. Yeah, so you might get the inside scoop, but yeah, the five P's, right? Is that which one is uh is it the five P's no limit no limit life yes sir okay yeah 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 I'm st I'm still writing it as we speak though so but I just thought that was a catchy title I already have the five P's uh so I'm still just kind of maxing out you know like how I want to spend that talk but it's gonna be fire you better believe it because I sit back and I get to observe with legends like yourself you know and the others in our Toastmasters group man so it's just a tremendous blessing that you and I met. And it's crazy that your name is Dominique, and my oldest boy, his name is Dominique. <laughs> and I, from what I hear, y'all recently met. <laughs> y'all both took to each other. Is this true? Yes, sir. I think it was last Saturday. Small world, <laughs> man. Small world. Two Dominiques in the same place, man. Who would think it? I know, right? And it's getting more, and it's getting more popular with the guys now. The name, which is awesome, I used to get flack for that when I was freaking elementary school. Like, ain't that a girl's name? Uh -huh. Like, uh, <laughs> like, darn it. <laughs> The only two Dominiques that I knew growing up, one was a gymnast and one played basketball. Yep. <laughs> so we talking about you were either Dawes or you were Wilkins. That was it. I didn't know a Dominique, like, personally growing up. But, yeah, now I know. And I'm I'm just so pleased and, you know, honored to be in your circle, man, because I, I truly look up to you and everything that you have going on, being an author and speaker and trainer. And I just pray that God continues to bless you, especially – Going North, this podcast, this whole series, everything that you have concerning Going North, man. I just pray God continues to bless you. 
That 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 means a lot, man. Thank thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks a bunch for your listening ears on the Going North podcast. I hope you really, really enjoyed that episode. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those who love podcasts and love listening to some inspiration and motivation. And keep a lookout for the sequel to Going North Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself in October 2018. And if you'd like to connect with me directly, feel free to shoot me an email at dombraidman at gmail.com.